Hi everyone, it's Sam, NFT Statistics, and this is your Proof Daily NFT Countdown. Today was a day of a lot of interesting art sales, PFP sales. We're gonna dive into those, a couple smaller headlines as well, but let's start off with a quick market overview. Volumes were down a fair bit. It feels like a lot of that Milady volume and, and, and floor price pump that we saw has kind of unwound a little bit. We're seeing buyers down as well. You can see in this chart, you know, this goes back a year and a half, but certainly at the low end of the two year range when it comes to unique buyers of NFTs. Large cap index was flat. You know, most of the days we've been going down. Today it was pretty much flat, had a, a bit of strength in World of Women, some strength in Doodles and weakness in Captains and D Gods. You know, I wanted to dig into a metric I've recently been looking at, which is how many NFTs per collection had their last sale as someone dumping into a bid on Blur. And the reason I think this is important is because most of the people who buy via bids on Blur, and not everybody, some people do that to, it's kind of their form of sweeping, but most of the people end up wanting to sell reasonably soon, not being long-term holders. The reason is one, it's a sign that you're trying to earn airdrop points. You know, bidding is a great way to earn Blur points. And secondly, when you bid, uh, when you do a collection bid, you don't know what you're going to get. So it's not uh, going to be a situation where you're feeling super connected to the NFT. I think that that's more the long-term pick one you like and go with it. And I want to see how many across each project NFTs had their last sale as someone dumping on Blur. And you can see everywhere, every project from Moonbirds to, to Mutant Ape Yacht Clubs, all of these have had more than 500 of their la of the NFTs in the project, most recently having you know, the sale be someone dumping on a bid. And this is one of the reasons I'm a little bit cautious still. I just think there's too many NFTs in the hands of short-term players. Now, if you look at the median holding period of people who buy NFTs via bids on Blur, the median holding period is actually just six hours. Now, a lot of these people you know, who are still holding have held for a lot longer. This is more about the churn. You know, that compares to, you know, where someone's picking their NFT and buying not on Blur, the, the median holding period is 48 hours. So still not great compared to where we were, you know, I think before this high frequency trading area era, but I thought this was kind of an interesting table, figured I would share it with you. Another metric that I recently looked at is what have been the volume? What's been the total number of sales for projects that went from two times points to one times points? Now, up until May 1st, every single project on Blur got double rewards uh, for bidding on the projects. With May 1st, when they launched Blend, they also removed double rewards for most of the projects, just about everything but about 15 of them, or maybe 10 to 15, something like that. And what you can see here is that the number of trades on the projects that, that got moved from 2X to 1X is down 65% versus that last week in May, down 93% from the peak. And I think what this says is just so much of the volume right now is dependent on th those incentives. When those incentives get removed or get dialed down, a lot of the volume goes down as well. Back to prices in terms of the mid cap index, it was largely flat. Only one force was the standout up about 46%. Let's look at that chart. And I don't think there was any super new news, but last week or a few days ago, they announced an ambassador program trying to get more people trying to do what they can with the IP and promote the brand. You also had Horizon Labs recently joined forces with them trying to help the project and build out the project. And a few members, I believe Degentraland said that they went and bought a bunch of Only One Forces kind of in line with this partnership on the belief that if they are working hand in hand, you should align incentives and own a lot of the NFT. So perhaps that helped drive the rally. In terms of art projects, there were three that did 10 ETH of volume or more, Meridians, Elevated Deconstruction, and Fidenza. Looking at a few of those sales, a Fidenza sold for 42 ETH, Definitely the low end of the range for what we've seen in Fidenzas, but that range has been going lower and lower. An elevated deconstruction sold for 16 ETH. Again, this one is you know a, a valuable asset because it is the lowest supply project in that first season of Art Blocks Curated. I believe this is a 13 color spread chromy squiggle in the lower left, sold for 12 ETH. You know about 30% above the floor, so nice sale there. And then a seven ETH sale for an anti cyclone in the lower right all very cool art block sales. And there were a few more, but these were the four that I wanted to highlight. A couple headlines, second story, just want to talk about a few headlines, a couple with Moonbirds uh, that went through. The first one to mention is a partnership with Spotify, going into a little bit of the details there. Moonbird, hold, Moonbird holders who have Android phones can access a playlist that was created by Danny Lee and the Songburbs, I believe a sub-parliament within the group. Now this you know, it's nothing huge, right? You just, if you have a Moonbird and you have an Android phone, you can get a playlist. But I think the bigger picture here is that this is a partnership that Moonbirds want to have with Spotify. Our head of business development had been working with them and thought this would be a cool way to, to join forces with one of the bigger Web2 companies in music. Uh, a quote here from AKA Stevie kind of on, on the Twitter thread, he said, this is, she said, 
This is just a tiny step towards mainstream token gated content. It's cool when Web2 embraces Web3 technology and it's cool when brands recognize great communities to work with. This is not a big needle moving announcement, just a cool little thing. Kevin Rose got a little pushback because people were saying, why, what's the big deal of, 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 a, of a playlist? And he said, the why is easy. It's because it didn't take many product development cycles and it lands us a, with Spotify promotion power. The better question is why not? Overall, I think it's just like an interesting company to join forces with, some that, one that clearly has huge user base uh, and, 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 and huge distribution. Hopefully there'll be more to come there. The second thing from Moonbirds is that the Diamond reshuffle was completed. Remember a bunch of people as part of the Diamond exhibition got a bunch of art from the same artists. So Moonbirds decided if you want to reshuffle, put that back in, in, in the jar, we will do a reroll and people will get new art. They also added a bunch of new art that wasn't in the original section. Uh, so, you know, you had five Moonbirds added, five Oddities added, five Eggs added, a Delo Crest, a Squiggle, a Wall by Tyler Hobbs, as well as the Cryptos. And then they got a couple of Beeples and a couple of CGBs and a few more. Overall, it seems to have gone well. I saw a bunch of people on my timeline who are happy with what they got. So I guess that's good. All is well that ends well. Congrats to the team on figuring that one out and to people who got really cool art as part of that. Another headline I wanted to talk about was that Snowfro announced that he is going to be donating 10 Squiggles. Uh, which are going to go to ALS Research. These are squiggles that have not been minted. You know, as we know, when Chromie squiggles were minted originally, a, a couple hundred, I believe, were saved. And we said these are not going to be minted right now. So the collection is not at its complete 10,000 state yet because there are a bunch of unminted ones. And, and basically, Chromie or basically, Snowfro said we are going to do an auction for 10 of them, and all of the proceeds are going to go towards ALS Research. So really, just a great donation, an awesome thing that he is doing here. This is with vertical crypto art. So just very cool to see that. I'm excited about that. And then lastly, let's talk about a few notable sales. There are just a lot of sales that were kind of interesting yesterday, starting with PFPs. You know, you had a Doodle sell for 20 ETH. This is a Popsicle. You had a, a D God sell for 25, a Gold Guitar Azuki for 35. And then this one in the upper left is a very clean board ape with the, with the captain hat. That was bought by Daniel Allegre, the CEO of Yuga. You know, originally he had a mutant ape, so here he's upgrading to a board ape, paid 50 ETH, so congrats to everyone there. One more board ape sale, just to mention, 200 ETH for this piece. Just a huge sale in this market, given how weak everything has been. Why is this so valuable? What has two very grail traits, the diamond grail, as well as the laser eyes. So kind of a double grail, plus the blue fur. Overall, just a really cool ape. So awesome to see. Uh, that even in this market, we're seeing 200 ETH sales. This piece is called 6942 AD by ACK, sold for 52 ETH. It looks like it's part of the piano collection. It's not. This is a one of one from Alpha Centauri Kid uh, that C Cosimo de' Medici bought on secondary. Here he's saying, I got a piano after all. You know, I couldn't stop staring at it. Thank you for, for the smooth trade. This trade ended up going through for about 52 ETH. Uh, so really uh, a strong one of one sale for this market. If you look at other Alpha Centauri kid sales in his one of ones, he had one as high as 165 ETH that was bought by 6529. Uh, and then he's had a bunch of other sales kind of in that 50 to 100 ETH range. So this is right in there. You know, he's certainly an artist who has a lot of momentum right now. So congrats to him. Congrats to Cosmo as well on that, on that sale. And then another ACK piece. This is from the Broken Keys collection. This was a the first sale in the Broken Keys collection on secondary. It was bought in the auction for 12 ETH and just sold two days later for 21.5 ETH. The buyer uh, was NY Doorman. You can see his tweet right here. He basically wanted to be part of this, realized it, and he got a DAO together, got a group of other buyers, and they bought this piece collectively. So love to see that. This piece here, Branch 6 by Rip Cash, sold for 16 ETH. You know, I started digging a little bit more into Rip Cash's sales history, and I didn't realize this, but just in October, November of last year, his work was selling for under one ETH. Okay, this is a look at the sales in this closed circuit series. And you can see in November, these sales were at one or lower, and he's now elevated to consistent sales between 50 and 20, 15 and 20 ETH. Awesome to see that. Congrats, Rip Cash. Like in this bear market, it's been tough for one of one artists, for art blocks, and for PFPs. So when you see someone who's really bucked that trend, yeah, you got to love to see it. So congrats to him. One new artist I wanted to talk about, a piece called An Accessory to Absurdity by Hofka. This piece sold for 3.3 ETH. Hofka is a very well-respected in real life traditional artist, has work in the MoMA in London, really at a, top, a bunch of the top museums all around the world. Uh, but he's also made a name for himself in NFTs. 
his description of this piece. He says that this piece has references to involvement in, 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 in Web3 in a lot of different ways, the green of Pepe, the tungsten cube. He says it's hard for him to describe this piece other than the titles. The absurdities in this painting remind him of the meme, fuck around and find out, which is also about the logic of absurdity. So just a, just a cool sale, 3.3 ETH. You can see his other top sales. You know, he's had pieces sell for 30 ETH, his Genesis, as well as others in that 10 to 25 ETH range. So this is certainly at the low end of the range for where Hofka has been selling in the past, but that's what we've seen for a lot of artists recently. And then one last sale to talk about, Drunk on the Train by Grant Yoon. This piece sold for 20 ETH. Now, when I had Grant Yoon on the podcast, he said that he used to have all sorts of different styles and it was very unpredictable what it would look like. This looks nothing like a Grant Yoon piece. And it's a video, it kind of shakes to give you that drunken feel. You know, he had one of his collectors call him about 18 months ago and said, hey, you need to get consistent with your look and feel. That's the way that you are really gonna elevate your game for yourself and for your collectors. And that's kind of how he landed on this nostalgic illustration style. But really awesome to see one of those free nostalgia illustration style pieces like this one sell for 20 ETH. Uh, love to see it. Congrats to Grant as well as the buyer and the seller. That is all from me today. I hope you like the show. If you like it, give us a like, subscribe to the channel, tell us what you think in the comments or just say hi in the comments. I'll go through this, through this weekend and respond to every comment. Hope you have a great weekend. We'll be back on Monday and every weekday with another show.